Every robot in War Robots goes a long way from an idea to release. Over months, many people contribute something to the development. Everything starts with a goal and concept. Before starting their work, uh, game designers carefully analyze the current game situation. What combat roles aren't currently well represented? Is there something in the game that lacks a solid counterplay? After that, uh, game designers gather and suggest their ideas. Our goal was to create a mobile titan. Make it good as a beacon grabber and a close combat fighter. We had six concepts at the beginning. Among them was, for example, a titan codenamed Ferris. It could drag enemy robots to your position to finish them off and teleport to teammates to get out of danger. Another titan, Hopper, did cover Bumble while jumping. After the first round of discussions, some concepts were killed, while some evolved. Say uh, from Ferris, uh, we took away the enemy displacement. In a real fight, uh, that would disorient people a lot. Uh, that's not a very fun thing to fight against. By the end, only three concepts survived. Those were Ferris, Hopper, and the thing uh, we called Magnet. Magnet had two modes. In the first, it was moving slowly and pushing enemies away. In the second, it sped up. The idea was simple. A magnet would run into the enemy group and then push them in all direction. Everyone noted how menacing magnet felt. However, uh, with two effects separated between two modes, it felt somewhat clunky. After we combined two abilities into one, as the picture finally cleared up. That's how Minus came to be. Those early discussions result in a design document, which we then pass to artists and programmers. Artists create the concept art and 3D model of robot. Systems programmers write code for the robot's ability. Graphics programmers create new visual effects. Our interface designers also join the process very often. For instance, uh, before Nodens you couldn't target allies. The user interface team found a way to do that. Different game designers draw their inspiration from different places. Some use real military machines as robot references. Others delve into sci-fi stories or world culture and mythology. One day we discovered stories of a demon king named Ravana. Hindu legends tell that he was invulnerable for those he considered the worthy enemies. This concept gave us an idea of a robot who could become untouchable for an enemy. When we were discussing a concept for a support titan, someone suggested that repair rays could look like jellyfish tentacles enveloping the robots. That comparison stuck with us, so we decided to play around with an idea of a robot with tentacles. We gave the robot concept a simple name – Medusa. It means jellyfish in Russian. That happened to be a great code name, as everyone instantly understood what we're envisioning. But in English, Medusa is the name of a gorgon from Greek mythology. She has an ability to turn others into stone. Our Titan couldn't do that. Maybe if it had tentacles on its head, or maybe a lockdown ability, then Medusa as a name would work. But that wasn't the case. So why did we call it Nodens? That's the name of a Celtic deity of the sea, healing, dogs and hunting. The more we thought about that, the more amazing connections we discovered. Healing. This one is pretty obvious. Our Nodens repairs or heals its allies. Next. This titan looks very much like a sea-dwelling creature. With dogs and hunting, it's a bit more subtle. When Noden sets up repairing links with his allies, they almost look like hounds on leashes. Usually, when we pick a name for the robot, we cast a vote. In this case, the name pretty much chose itself. Once we have complete artwork and code, we begin testing the robot internally and on the test server. Meanwhile, we keep working on the robot's look and feel. Animators adjust the movements, VFX artists add uh, visual effects, and sound designer add sound. QA engineers, uh, our testers, uh, make sure that nothing breaks in the process. The server allows us to find the right robot stats, such as speed, durability, and everything else. Once, we decided to make a robot that would embody the role of saboteur by using infinite stealth. After checking the prototype, our opinions on it were almost opposite. Some thought it is cool and exciting, some considered it too weird. 
Opinions in the team are often different, but rarely so different. So we suggested player to try it. We sent a rough prototype to the test server. And can you imagine? Player opinions also clearly divided. However, stats and gameplay videos showed us that the robot could work really well in the game. And most importantly, there were players who instantly fell in love with the robot. Today, Loki is running around the live server for almost two years and still has both fans and haters. And yet, we cannot imagine the game without this pesky little dude. Every time we work on a new robot, we find something new and interesting. After Minus went to the server, we watched all the YouTube videos we could find. We noticed that in some cases Minus's push could send the enemy flying over the entire map. It was a bit too much, although we knew that making the push too weak would kill all the fun. So we began experimenting. We took Minus and started clashing it with different robots, until we found the exact right amount of force. By the way, without Loki we probably wouldn't have the flying robots today. While we were working on the Ragnarok squad with the Loki in it, we received a task to make new robots for the Lunar New Year event. We had uh, little time for concepts, so first decision was to remake the ones we already had. We tried to remake Loki, Tyr and Fenrir into Eastern theme, but it didn't quite work. Their ability didn't fit into Asian culture. We didn't want to call the robot ninja simply because it could go invisible, or Guan Yu, just because it is a well-known character. To save the Ragnarok squad, we built a new prototype literally over the night. That was a flying green destroyer with a built-in rocket launcher. And suddenly people like it. That prototype paved the way for Ao Guang, named after Dragon from Chinese legends. Ragnarok squad was saved, we released it soon after Dragons. Finally, we have a robot almost ready for action. Testers and programmers fix the last remaining issues, community managers release robot overview, a bit more and our robot will be available in the game. And here it is. Even at this point our work is not over. We carefully monitor each robot's performance after its release. We watch how it performs, how people react to it, how they master new abilities. And when it's time for another robot, we begin anew.